good morning fans privateer fx coming at you easter monday just want to take a look at a couple of charts here it's going to be low volume low activity today but there were a few key levels with a couple of things so i just wanted to just go over it in my head uh and share it with you guys because i guess that's what i do um but it's more more for me than for you so don't take that the wrong way but such is life. Anyway, crude. Uh, we opened a buck higher after this agreement, um, but the crude market didn't like it, right? I mean, traded straight down uh, to 2203. So we opened up 20, 2460 down to 2203, uh, bearish engulfed on the hour. Now we've sort of crawled back. We did trade up to 2455 again. Now we're we're actually this is delayed, but we're around 2370 right now. Bottom line is all of the analysts that I've read and all the research I read basically said that, you know, the kind of cut nine million barrels just isn't enough. We need at least twenty to thirty million barrels of cuts to balance uh supply demand that so whatever to balance basically demand destruction that has been going on so oil looks like a sell uh, no dog in this fight but I just thought it was interesting um, all that malarkey about this about that 30 million barrels someone said at one point we trade up to 28 bucks all a bunch of horse shit um, and here we are 2384 we're getting to the point where oil kind of can't go much lower. Uh, that said, it can go, you know, six bucks lower, I think. If you look at this on the monthlies, from back in 2001, we did trade down to this key 17 area. And this, this does look like a destination level uh, for oil. Again, uh, my track record in oil is not super. Um, one could say that uh, I suck at trading oil. Wouldn't be um, that wouldn't be an exaggeration. But just from a chart perspective, and then from a reality perspective, um, oil at 17 bucks is pretty close to oil at zero. You know, you you just can't. The oil industry just has to go away at 17 bucks, and as it does go away, as bankruptcies do happen, production will naturally decline. Um, how much lower in this day and age can we live than 17 is it is an open question just if I'm just applying natural logic to this equation which I know in markets often doesn't work or it doesn't it's hard to time logic um, but technically it looks like a destination on the practical side it does uh, make sense to me that we can't go much lower than that. Mind you, uh, that's 30% lower than here. So on a percentage basis, it's still a ways. Um, but seriously, it doesn't, if you're a long-term or a me, if you're running a long-term or medium-term book, um, makes sense to me to own some oil or own some upside in oil uh, if we trade around $17, $16. We'll see. I'm not sure we're going to get there, but I just wanted to bring it up. Um, let's go to gold. Obviously, gold uh, rocked it on um, on Thursday. Here's the dailies. Basically, 1680 to 1750. Anything on the 16 handle, you have to own now. Uh, as crazy as the vol is it's really really tough um, so size it accordingly I don't know whether you should do call spreads here or or just own a you know a small amount of futures so you can wear 50 or 100 dollar moves because this is the problem um, you know you can see this move here 1743 so if you're long on 17 handle you had to wear it all the way down to 72 so let's just say it's 50 bucks um, and that's tough right because if you're wearing a $50 price move against you you kind of have to be looking for a $500 uh, 
target. You know, you're looking for these 10 to 1 ratios or at least 5 to 1 um, for normal, sensible, professional trading. So it's tough. Uh, I don't have the answer, but I, knew, I do know the bias is long. For those of you who have um, excellent aim and great market timing, try and snipe some, I guess, maybe around 1700 makes sense to me but you could also wait for some silliness some silly move to 1660 1650 that could happen but long gold makes a lot of sense just based on the destruction of the value of the dollar uh, what the Fed is doing with QE and their balance sheet and their SPVs that are 10 times leveraged that are backing these loans it is um, once in a lifetime, I think you'll see something like this. Uh, and I don't know when this move is going to start getting some energy and when this move is, is going to start getting going. But as far as we're concerned here, um, the dollar's in trouble. And gold is part of that story, uh, if you like. Dollar Swiss is a much more subdued uh, vehicle for this. This is our vehicle of choice. Uh, perhaps because we're old and we're, we're kind of pussies now. Um, maybe not as much risk in the tank. Who knows? Um, but we think Dollar Swiss has you know another 800, 900 points in it. You just want to sell high ones uh, as best you can, right? You can sell 70s, 90s, 9720 above. Um, Dollar Swiss, we think, is going to take a look at the monthlies here we're not going to go down to the s and b lows which is this 70 handle but we are probably going to be visiting somewhere between 83 and 88 uh, eventually look at that doji on the monthlies last month we don't trade monthly bars um, risk reward sucks on that but it's kind of an interesting interesting point there um, so dollar swiss uh, it's kind of the same trade as gold, uh, but just less fall. And then, of course, dollar Norway. Uh, as hectic as gold, this chart doesn't do it justice. The vol in dollar Norway is craziness. Uh, but selling high ones in dollar Norway is, um, is our third horse in this, uh, in this triumvirate, in this cavalry of dollar sales. Let's take a look at Euro. You, you know, the, the whole Euro story is, is a little bit tougher. I would, I, would, I would say that a lot of the big players are going to use Euro as their dollar proxy just because of the, liquid, the liquidity. But Euro has its own problems here that are hard to wrap your head around, right? Lack of unity within the Euro group about helping each other out. Italy's weakened state. Um... You could easily argue argue euro is going to one, as you could argue that euro is going to one twenty. Uh, we do like it to one twenty, but we also think if it goes to one, euro Swiss goes to ninety cents, and the euro blow up um, will also drag dollar Swiss down as well. Which is why we've chosen dollar Swiss instead of euro dollar for our main dollar short proxy. Uh, complicated as always um, you know the complicated story is eased by the ease of trading right anyone any Muppet can trade euro um, super liquid you could put you know good size on your risk management is much easier than in dollar Swiss or dollar Norway or gold uh, so it's a horse to consider. I just wanted to bring it up and explain why we're not considering it as, as strongly. Um, but euro dollar should go higher under this under these conditions. You know, Europe's doing 500 billion in QE. The U.S. is doing five trillion. Um, I like them apples. Dollar yen's come off with risk. Uh, I'm not sure what to say on this. It's been quite confusing with perhaps GPIF on the bid uh, and then dollar sales from the global macro community. 
not sure who's going to win this. Um, but we're lower today, basically, with the stock market uh, also just a bit lower. As everybody knows, this 2800 region is the 50% of this whole move. 33.99 down to 21.74. This is the 50%. The 61.8% is, is 2900. This is your like. Uh, if you're super patient and you're a bear, you wait for this. You may dabble in the short side here um, at this 50% area. We've come off today, uh, been down to 14. Now we're trading. Um, this chart is delayed. We're, we're trading at, oh no, we're trading 42, 43 now. Um, we are core short in the uh, medium term book. The tactical book is square. Um, your stop has to be above 2,900, so be super careful. Um, size it accordingly, and are you willing to risk this? And uh, Give it some thought, right? This isn't just like a knee-jerk, sell this, there's a real tight stop. You know, a 100-handle stop needs some deep reflection. So give it, give it the reflection it's needed. Let's just go to Boone's. Uh, should be closed today. Let me check. Yeah, boons are not open. Um, you know, we like short boons. Uh, same thing, core short boons. Um, we're waiting for this this uh, minus 15 to break. Tens, a uh, little trickier just because of the elephant in the room. We call the Fed that's buying every single day. But eventually this has to turn and it's going to be nasty. Um, and so you just kind of want to be waiting and watching for the nasty turn in tens. Look, I've said a lot for Easter Monday. Um, crude looks like shit. Um, just wanted to mention that. And, you know, we're trying to look for places to get short dollars. One last thing quickly. Um, this is an interesting chart. You know, any kindergartner can see this. So uh, 124.83 is an important level. Um, so keep an eye on this quiet Easter Monday. Good day to run some cable stops. So keep an eye out here. Cable, it's a very interesting chart. All right, now I've really said enough. Bye, 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 bye. Good trading. Bye.